Hi guys, welcome to the guitar show. It's Ramon Goose here. Hope you as well we're going to be checking out uh, the ultimate slide guitar tone okay so the ultimate slide guitar tone really it's a bit of a um, um, misnomer because basically the best slide guitar tone is your slide guitar tone that you currently have that's the best one for you you know so I'm just saying that I've done some research and I've really concentrated on players who I admire such as Raikuda another great young player so Raikud is kind of like the old generation and kind of the young generation, which is really um, an amalgamation of players like Raikuda and maybe Dwayne Allman and even Derek Trucks is a player called Blake Mills. So I've kind of taken something from a younger generation guy and something from an older generation. Um, my hero is Raikuda for sure. He's the best, but I, I really love um, Blake Mills. So I've kind of combined the, those two kind of players in terms of my gear. Okay. Um, and also what's happening on the guitar as well. Um, obviously, I've put in a bit of myself because I don't want to be a clone, you know. So anyway, here we go. This is the guitar. This is this is the the Cudacaster, and uh, it's about fifteen years old now. So um, it started off with a, an old seventies strap body, um, which I think is ash. I'm not sure. Um, we've got a fifties Falco pickup. Um, this pickup you c you can buy a reproduction of this, so you don't have to go hunting around and and um, destroy a, a lap still you can you can basically find um, a repro which is just as good this has a special tone to it it's a you know the, the old ones are actually uh, quite troublesome because you have to replace the magnet and you have all sorts of kind of problems just due to the age of it but this one's um, been worked on and, and it's just got a very very unique tone so i, I really love this one um this is a, a um 
a Tiesco pickup, which has got the, I guess these have got like rubber, rubber um, magnets or whatever. And again, it's quite a mellow, it's a very, very mellow sound and it's a very it kind of hollow mellow sound that's very, become now famous because people have started to use these. Um, the neck is very important. I personally, it's up to you how you want to do this. Now, Rikuda uses a wider neck for his um, slide playing. Now, I prefer a more narrow neck, um, so, uh, 42 millimeters, and it stays narrow pretty much all the way up here. Um, obviously, it's got a fit in here, but you know what I mean. It doesn't get wide quickly, you know? So that means that I can, you know, I can put my thumb over the neck to make chords, shapes, and stuff like that. So that's kind of another thing. Another thing that I like is 6100 wire and that comes from me years and years ago trying to be Steve Ray Vaughan and it's kind of like a, a little thing that I've never left me I've, I've you know and I've got a, I've got a theory about big frets which I'll, I'll talk about in, in another video because they're not always the best thing to have big frets they don't always work especially on a on a, on a Fender guitar and I'll tell you why but that's for another video so another thing I like um is flat wounds now Raikou uses round wounds and flat wounds on his number one, he uses round wounds, okay? Now, I prefer flat wounds. The reason is it gives me more of a 50s, because what I'm looking for is like, imagine Sun Studio, Elvis, Presley, sort of all those, um, Howlin' Wolf, all, all those, you know, that 50s American amazing tone. That's that's what I'm trying to get to. That's really my goal, you know, with all this gear. Um, and the flats help me achieve that. And I'm using 12s. Okay, so they can be a little bit tough if, you know, for some people, 12s are hard to play with. Um, Raikudu actually now uses 11s, you know, he's, he's getting on in life, you know, so, you know, he's, he needs something a bit lighter for his fingers. That's fair enough. I prefer 12s. It means that when you capo it, um, it's not going to go too flat on you. And also, I have my action a little bit high um, and I can measure that. I will measure that and put it into the description because I know a lot of people have been asking. So this is basically the guitar. There's nothing more to it. It's a simple thing. You can make these guitars for 500 pounds, 700 bucks. You can make a guitar like this. You don't have to go crazy and spend two grand or something like that. It's 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 not, and it's good fun. The whole thing about making a Cuda caster is it's really, really good fun. And you can see from my videos, I've made a Telecaster, which I called the Goose Caster because uh, I think there's only one Telecaster, which is like this. Although I, no I noticed somebody else has been making them recently to look the same, but anyway. Um, and you can make your own things. You make your own design and colors. It's a really good fun project to do yourself. So I would highly recommend making your own Cuda caster. And it's, you know, when I say make your own, you just buy a neck, you buy a body and you get a screwdriver and you bolt them on. I mean, how hard is that? So let's talk about the pedals here because this, this is next in chain. We could talk about the cable, but who, you know, cables, who cares, you know? Um, let's uh talk about the pedals um so really for this video we're going to be talking about the black fountain which is an oil i think they're called an oil drum delay which was the earliest type and i think uh, was it dave gilmore used to use them and this just gives a bit of hair on the note it gives a, a bit of space a bit of ambiance so i'm going to just demonstrate that to you now Try with the Black Fountain. Go for single notes. Put it back on. And then without. Gives a little bit more. Just gives um, you know the note more spread, and uh, you need it. Trust me, you need it. Okay, there you go. And you can do other stuff with this. Okay, a lot more. This is I'm using it as a very basic feature here, and, and we're going to come back to this pedal in a minute for another reason. Right. Okay. So this is this is one of my favourite pedals. It's called the Quicksilver. Two reasons why it's my favourite pedal. Number one is because I used to do. I was very naughty as a young boy, and I used to do graffiti with my twin brother all over Essex, where we used to live in England. Um, and uh, we used to do it on bridges, and, and I don't say anyone to do this because it's illegal and you shouldn't do it, but we used to spray spray cans. And, and so I love graffiti, and this is like the only pedal that's got a graffiti logo on it, I think, so that's why I love it. Second reason, 
I love it, not least because Rikuda is using it, but it gives an amazing analog kind of um, repeat. Okay, so let's just listen to this. Without. With. Okay, and I try to use these in a subtle way, and you're gonna you're gonna find out why we need to be subtle about these pedals. Okay, so these are these two pedals. Now we're gonna to go to my latest acquisition, and this is another pedal that Rikuda uses, and this is uh, an amazing pedal. It's now my favorite pedal. Um, the Quicksilver was my favorite delay, but now this is this is called the Echo Nugget. So I'm gonna move my camera so that we can just focus on this pedal and we can go through a few of its features. Okay guys, so this is my latest acquisition actually, which I've just really bought for this um, video in fact. Um, but this really is, we're, go we're going all the way here, and this is an amazing, amazing pedal. It's got two 12 AX7 tubes. Um, on this side, we're, it's a, basically a preamp, and on this side is the uh, delay. And really, if you're looking for a kind of a tape delay, um, but without all the hassle of having a tape, um, then this is going to be the next you know thing i think there's a few other alternatives out there but for me really and the fact that rikuda uses this is um you know kind of sold me on the idea to, to get one of these and the guy that makes it he's really really knowledgeable he really knows what he's doing so it's it's pretty pretty incredible pedal so let's just uh, check the clean sound first <laughs> So we're going to put the uh, analog delay in and now this is how I probably use it um, with uh, the other pedals so I'm just going to show it to you now how like this Okay, so that's probably how I generally use it. But let's just uh, max it out, just so that you can see what's going on here. So if I put my um, time up here, and let's put some more repeats, put more some mix. got some really beautiful it kind of like really um, envelopes itself envelops itself around this the guitar tone so it kind of becomes one with the amplifier and there's kind of no hint of digitalness about it because um, just the way it's made it really really does um, sound amazing. <laughs> Okay, so this side of the um, delay pedal, you've got the preamp. So let's just have a little listen. As opposed to without. We're gonna come back and do a full review about this pedal. So if you're really interested, come back soon and I'm gonna do a proper review just on this pedal but for now we're talking about the ultimate slide tone so let's get back to the rig guys next up in the ultimate slide rig today is the victoria reverberamo okay it's made by victoria amplifiers it's an amazing piece of kit it's um, basically a reverb unit a 50s reverb unit coupled with a 50s vibrato so i think it's a brown face vibrato and a 
a blackface reverb unit, okay? So now, normally what I do is I go through the reverb circuit all the time, it's always on. And sometimes, I, like today, I have the reverb off. But let me just put the reverb on for you. Oh. So I put the uh, delay off. So let's max the reverb out. You can see there that it's, it's very lush. It's, a, it's, a, it's got a spring unit at the back here, which is, it acts as a door and you take it off. Um, but yeah, so, but for today, we're gonna to turn that reverb level right off, but we're still going through the circuits. Just makes it a little, a little bit more mellow, um, which is very good with this um, next piece of kit we're, we're gonna talk about. Now let's have a listen to the vibrato on this. So, let me play you that. Okay, so that's the vibrato circuit. Um, again, beautiful, beautiful sound. Um, it's a very lush, very mellow. It's a great effect. So that vibrato is, it's, um, you're never gonna get that out of a pedal. Um, I don't care what anyone says, you might get close, but you're never gonna get that tone from um, a pedal. And it's really like, you know, when, when I'm doing my own albums and I'm, I'm working with production, that kind of sound can really better track and just take it to another place, just having that in the mix. And when you're using it live, it's, it's, it's a real amazing experience. But we can use pedals if you can't afford one of them. That's cool, we can use pedals and we're gonna talk about that at the end. Okay, so next up, we're gonna talk about um, the Filmer Sound amplifier. Now, we've, we've got one here, first of all, which is the classic 385 model. And this is really the model that became the desirable one. Although this one has six V6s, which is my personal favorite actually for the 385 model. Um, they also come with um, EL84s, which are lots rarer, but um, equally as good, different sound. Um, but the 6v6 for me, with this configuration is really the ultimate. This one was actually tweaked into a guitar amp by Bill Crenard from Two Rock fame. And uh, he's done a sterling job. Um, and uh, yeah, this thing, it really sings. I'm not using it today though, because my favorite Filmer Sound amplifier, which I've made for Sly, is this one here, and this one here is an EL84. Um, th th now, I think this one was made in Japan and it was made in the 60s for the uh, European markets. Pla well, places that would be 220, so it would be maybe in North Africa and uh, France and um, Europe and places like Brazil and Argentina maybe. So it was made for countries that ran on 220, although I, th I think Brazil is like America, I think Argentina, um, it's 220 and I know that because that's where my father came from. So it's a bit of a rare amplifier. If you can find one, buy it. It's got EL84s, it's very clean. It's got this beautiful sparkly high end. In fact, the tubes are still the same tubes that came with it. So it's a very robust unit and um, and it's just fantastic for slide. It breaks up at the right um, moment. Um, generally, I don't really run them into distortion even live. I, I like a clean sound and if I'm gonna get if I'm going to break the, you know, break it into distortion, I use pedals to give me that boost. So what we're going to do now is put these pedals on, these delay pedals on, and the reverberamo, and then you're going to hear them all working together. Now we'll start with the echo nugget here on because I can't reach my hand over there and play the guitar at the same time. I'm not that clever. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm just going to show you and demonstrate uh, one of the reasons why I like using these three delay pedals together. It gives you a real big ambience, a real big spread, and it makes you kind of sit behind the note a little bit. So um, you kind of play a little bit more mellow, which is good for me because sometimes I'm a little bit over the top and um, and I rush. I, I'm, a, I'm kind of like, I drink too much coffee, you know? So, so I'll give you an example of that. If, well, this is one of my own tunes, which goes... <laughs> Okay, so say if we're going for that more sort of, um, like I was saying, that Tweedy Sunhouse sort of vibe, um, then we would go for more um, on the bridge pickup. Again, same, we've got using the same three delay pedals. We've added in the Providence Soft 2, but this is a pedal by Yuki, who's from Free the Tone. Check him out, Yuki is the man. Right. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. So you're probably sitting there at home thinking, you know, that's not, that's not really the ultimate slide guitar tone, in my opinion. And that would be a valid statement for you to make because, again, you can have all this gear, but no idea. You know, you can have all this gear and then it may not work. It may not work for you. But for me, I think it's um, really, um, for me, I'm loving this uh, equipment. It's really making me inspired. And, and it's, it's where the tone I had in my head, which was that tweed 1950s sort of sound, I really feel I've achieved it, in my opinion. You know, this is all about opinion. So, okay, let's talk about um, how we can get the same sound, but from cheaper gear. Okay, so really, um, if I was gonna try and replicate this rig I've got here with some um, cheaper gear, again, the, the guitar is not expensive to make. These, you know, if, if you put a little bit of work in, like I had to make this guitar myself because I couldn't afford a 2000 quid you know version of this um and and i i made it for 500 quid you know so you can you can do the same as me um the pedals you only need a ts9 tube screamer type pedal for your overdrive now i'm using this uh, surf trem which is by carl martin i think it's very cheap it's a very good pedal when i go to germany or when i travel i don't use um the reverberamo you know this which is this sound <laughs> I don't use that tone, I use this instead. Put a bit more depth in there. You know, are the audience gonna notice? Probably not. Am I gonna notice? Yes, probably, but you know, so it's kind of like, you know, it's it's a cheap pedal. Am I gonna take this on a plane and risk getting it, um, you know, knack it in, you know. So you have to kind of like weigh up those things. And for me, I just take this Carl Martin surf trim out. It does the same thing. 
you know, well, it doesn't do the same thing. It's a tremolo, it's not a vibrato, but it's good enough for me, you know. It's good enough for, for one, two gigs. It's good enough, you know. Um, right, so let's talk about um, this Crucial Audio. This is an amazing pedal, this Crucial Audio. Um, now, it took me a while to, to save up to buy this pedal myself, so I can understand if you can't afford it, you know. But it really is the king of delays. It's like you buy that delay, you, you know, you could just do a gig with an amp and that delay. That's, that's, you wouldn't even need reverb anything you just take that and it's got preamp as well so you, you know you know what i mean it's a whole toolkit it's kind of big but you could literally do away with the whole pedal board with that pedal you know so that that's really if you want to go all the way you can get that pedal and it's really worth it you know it's got two tubes in it it's a lot of work gone into that so if you don't want to buy that pedal and you can get a hold of these two pedals um you're going to be fine you know if you can't find if you know if, if these pedals are hard for you to get you, you could get you know boss you could get a boss delay it doesn't have to be it's just the way this works as i said this this is the kind of double it just you're kind of just adding ambience oh. again what's going on there you know it's just adding a bit of air i mean i can hardly hear it myself but i know it's doing it and then you've got this is your nice bit of delay there and then from the Crucial Audio, I'm using slapback. I'm kind of using this more as a slapback. If I take these off, you know, probably with the time down actually a little bit more. So this is giving me my slapback. This is giving me my ambience. And this is the double. I just kind of spread the sound out a bit. And that's how I use those three delays. Um, and like I said, you don't need these particular delays to achieve that. You can use a boss delay as long as you just, you know, they can handle those time. Okay, so let's talk about um, this piece of kit here. So the Victoria, we've talked about the Victoria Reverberamo. Again, I'm using this also as a preamp. It affects the whole tone of this rig. It, it's um, because I'm going through the reverb circuit. Sometimes I put the reverb on, sometimes I leave it off. But the fact that it's, it's going through it, it's going through the tube, tubes, it, it warms the tone up you know so that's another thing a film a sound amp well you could i think if you want to get achieve the sound that i'm getting look for a small amp uh, a blues junior a deluxe and you're going to get in the same sort of ballpark so you don't need to go and find a film a sound and convert it and have all that hassle you can just go out and buy a deluxe type um, amp uh, a deluxe a tweed deluxe actually but um, a blues junior would suffice anything like that Okay, and for reverb as well, another pedal, another amazing pedal, you know, where you could you could literally get by without having the reverb ramo, which is basically a vibrato and a reverb in one unit. You can buy the Carl Martin Surf Trem and you can buy the Carl Martin Headroom pedal. Um, you're gonna get, you know, it's gonna get you in the same ballpark. So if I'm traveling and I don't wanna take this thing, which is quite expensive, I will take my Carl Martin Surf Trem and I will take the Headroom reverb spring reverb pedal and you know you're going to get pretty much there sometimes i actually prefer the reverb on the car martin so you know to this reverb it's just you know it just depends how i'm the track the music how i'm feeling so you know there you go you don't have to spend all a lot of money to achieve this sound you can ask me any questions in the comments and i uh, hopefully i'll be able to reply to all of your comments this is really i don't i, I can't really see where i can go beyond you know with this equipment i don't see where else i can go now this i've kind of arrived at my destination um so I, I hope you guys do as well i hope that you arrive at your destination or you're there already in terms of gear and we can all start making some music and forget about buying pedals and all that stuff so god bless guys hasta la vista thanks for watching bye